that you need to treat every issue like it's their first. Somewhere on the long line, he said that Kevin Smith has uh, always taken aspiration, inspiration okay, so. from aspiration. <laughs> <laughs> He's always been inspired by him. That's what I meant wow. to say. Welcome to the Nerdentials Podcast, starring your hosts Joe Tweet, Matthew Johnson, Nick Thomas. Dude, you got a problem? Yo, I solved it. Check out the hook. What? While my DJ revolves it. <laughs> I was jamming with you, bro. I know you can beatbox, yo. This is the, uh... This is the After Hour Remix with Nerdentials. Rick, Rick, you what? Sorry, let me rephrase that. With the Matthew Johnson. Remix. Anyway, I've got absolutely no segues right now. I figure we'll just cut right into it. Welcome to Nerdentials. Oh, that's your line. My bad. Sorry. That would have been great. We could have <laughs> rolled with that one. You didn't yeah. have to stop. Oh. And in fact, I can't do this forever, guys. I can't be the lead host forever. Yeah, I mean, okay. All I'm saying is, let's build. Some, I need to build some confidence in my team. Clearly, <sighs> shall we start over? Take two. You, do, Cinco. Do you want to man this one? <laughs> do what? Do, oh, do you want to take this one on? Roll the speed off of bean fudge, bud. It'll be the. First, <laughs> the I think Come on. we're we're coming up on our two year anniversary, and this on, is going to be. Uh, side note: This is going to be episode forty right now. This Come is on, episode four. Oh, we've had forty episode. Yeah. yeah. Let's talk about it after you intro yeah, the episode. Boy. Do you want to do it? Episode 40, big guy? Come on. Do the intro for us. I'm kind of nervous right now. You Sorry, I didn't mean to put it. I didn't mean to. Uh, do you want some help? Do you need to loosen up a little bit? <laughs> Take two. Let's I do mean, it again. Let's do it again. This is episode 40. If they don't know that we <laughs> cover movie, I, comic books, and video I, games. I'm going misqu- <laughs> to misquote him right now, but I believe Stan Lee once said that you need to treat Every issue like it's their first. Somewhere on the long line, he said that. Kevin Smith has uh, always taken aspiration. Inspiration okay, so. from aspiration. <laughs> <laughs> he has always been inspired by him. That's what I meant wow. to say. But that didn't really didn't sound like Stanley. It sounded more like... ex Cosby or something. You know like, what? I know that ain't Bill Cosby's. Why are you Bing, bringing him up? Bing Crosby. Oh, Old, oh my god. Take three. Yeah, this is uh, going to be an interesting one here. <laughs> a lot of good outtakes. We'll maybe save some of it for the end. I don't know yet. I just realized my an appropriate are intro. Right now. What's wrong Dear with your Lord. cheeks? What? My cheeks are red. Can you tell that? Or is it just me? I'm really red right now, but the LED blue oh, of yeah, our screen is. And and don't worry, the pink of the the headphones offsets it completely. Are you making fun of my kitty your headphones? Never. Hey, he finally, ca- hey. guys, he finally came to the plate for for the discussion we're not going to have tonight. Uh, we're cool with it. <laughs> you know that the Hello Kitty Island adventure we always talk about? <laughs> That's what it is. Hey, <laughs> come on. Can we, re- can we record an episode, Meow? Yeah. Oh, <clears throat> sorry, right, Meow. Let, hey, Matthew, would you like to? I really, times? <laughs> I was excited about what you were doing earlier. I want to give you the, the opening again. Do you need that massage or can you just do it? <laughs> Come on, Matt. I think you should just do it. We got faith in you. Welcome to Nerdentials. I'm your host. I (laughs) screwed it up again. (laughs) You're fine, bro. We're having fun. I want you to do this. (laughs) Oh, starting now. (laughs) Whatever. (laughs) There's no. I'm not counting anything down. Stop. You know we're not even live, dude. You ain't gonna be on the spot here. Come on. (laughs) I'm having fun watching you mess up. All right, welcome to Nerdentials, your weekly dose of the nerdy essentials, covering comic books, TV, video games, movies, and anything in between in that area. I'm your host, Matt, followed by the guy to my right, Mr. Joe Tweeten. Been here a while. It has been a while. And over in the ether, 
in Cro across the way. Across. I don't know how I'm gonna edit this, but go ahead and call him. Call him out. Pointing this way. Pointing this way. No, this call way. him out. Don't matter. <laughs> <laughs> call him out. Uh, Mr. Nick Thomas. Hello, I am Sancho. I mean, oh. I am Matthew Johnson. This is Joe Tweeden and Nick Thomas. How about that? That Does was that... fast and lightning and very <laughs> professional and sexy. Thank you, sir. Right here. Bring it in. <laughs> okay. We made it, and you, you guys might be wondering why Matthew introduced us all. It's because I wanted to change it up, guys. We wanted to change it up. You know why? Because today is episode 40, 4 -0. Oh, that felt good. Sorry. No, I apologize. No, I don't think the recording picked that up. Ah, oh, that had to have been picked up. I'm going to enhance that one and make it echo. I, I really hate it when Matthew cracks his neck, in case you guys haven't noticed. Over, over the two years, <laughs> one and a half years, it hasn't been two years yet. We're Feels almost there. Like death look, just. Um, but episode forty, yeah, it's it's a milestone of sorts. Uh, Nerdentials has hit middle age. Why do people say that's middle age? Fifty, fifty is middle age. If you're optimistic, I mean, I'm just saying. If you're gonna live to a hundred, yes, I'm excited I'll for live fifty. To what? I'll live to 100. I'll live past 100. Yeah, you will, you red-headed Irish. I got no words to say. I'm a magic man. In many ways. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. <laughs> the power of the ginger. Matthew, oh. thank you for that intro. <laughs> yeah. It was a beautiful first run, guys. Give him an applause right now. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I'll put that in Number the Number No. Oh. <laughs> Oh, that's a reference to Mr. Barry. You caught it. You caught it that time. I said in first book. Never mind. Anyway. Anyway, moving on. Sorry if I miss things, Mr. But Barry. Miss your face. Shout out to Mr. Barry. All right, yeah. All right, guys. Anyway, episode forty. We've lingered on long enough. It's gonna be interesting to cut this together. Oh yeah. But here we are. And we are, let me just scrape, there we go, let's make it even. You, you leaned in a little more to the mic, which you usually don't do, but I appreciate it. Well, you always tell me I'm quiet, so I figured I better just, you, know. you are, I've had quite a time editing the previous episode. <laughs> I'm kidding. Anyway. Last 39 episodes. I know. We or were technically like 30 episodes. Though. Anyway. I wasn't on nine of them. Guys, it's going to be kind of an out of place episode, because we're epi it's episode 40. Uh, the Mr. Lynn Dudgeon could not make it today because uh, he is literally on his deathbed. Not, I mean, he's just really Figuratively sick. speaking. He's really it's sick. It's just a mild case of Diflucus of the blowhole. <laughs> and a lot of us didn't know he had a blowhole before, but thank you, Nick, for shedding light on the case. I'm here for you. Um, that being said, Lynn, we uh, miss you tonight. We understand. So we'll, we'll, we'll conclude so with our... Tripping. We'll conclude with our E3 coverage, the Sony and Nintendo side of things, but we thought because of the scenario and because all of us are Xbox players, E3, yay! <laughs> oh, that right. we'll do a quick a quick traditional Nerdentials episode since Lynn is absent. Yes, and since now he's pretty much the only PS4 player. That was one of the biggest reasons, yes. I would, I would say Nintendo, but... You have a Switch too, so I don't know. And I have a he, 64. He has a Nintendo too. I, I have a 64. Lynn's actually a Switch owner now. I know, let's I'm all. Not. Now, well, you know, it's. Anyway, tonight is going to be a little bit of the film and TV talk, mostly movie trailers, because we've recently. We recently realized prior to recording that, oh yeah, Comic Con dropped a doozy on us. And so there's a lot of movie trailers that have recently dropped. Indeed. Uh, said doozies. Um, prior, it's really close to my gamer tag. You know, why do you guys? <laughs> uh, pri this is not a gaming set trick episode. So uh, going forward, um, yeah, let's doozy. Come on. There's a quick note here I'd like to make. It's very small. We have a little bit of listener feedback. It's been a moment since we've done this. So you know what? I'm going to throw in there that little segue called uh, listener feedback. <laughs> listener feedback. Oh. 
There it is. So, All right. <laughs> now that we've already done it. Oh. Now that it's happened. Hey, guys. Welcome to Listener Feedback. So, this week... Well, not this week. It's, we're recording a little ahead of time. We release things a little out of time. Recently, in the last month, we've got a very lovely bit of feedback slash uh, appreciation from a, a listener. Um, like to call out a certain Ms. Frankie who we mistakenly thought was a guy not too long ago when we were doing other listener yeah. feedback. And so um, I, don't, I made that awkward again. So we'll move past that part. So anyway, um, one of our long listeners who's listened to a lot of our stuff um, wrote an Instagram post uh, promoting us, and we deeply appreciate that, Miss. Um, the other feedback, the main feedback she wrote is that she loves our stuff and she'd love to be on an episode at some point. I think we're not above making that happen. We want to connect with you guys, our listeners, uh, out there. Um, click on our discord link down below and join the chatter. Um, and like her, you guys can reach us through Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. Um, but Frankie, thank you for your feedback. Um, we appreciate the fact that you've enjoyed all the stuff we've put out up to this point, uh, and hope you continue listening into the future. Thank you for the shout outs. Yes. And we thank, appreciate the shout outs. Thank you for promoting their dentals. To a young demographic. Yeah, we know we don't hit every age group, but thank you for being a fan nonetheless. And uh, we'll do a special episode in the not too far future. I don't know maybe you, I'm maybe you can join your brother-in-law, Mister Lin. I think that might be that a good better than mine. That might be a good fit. What the, this thing? Yeah, I can't do it apparently. I like you're at the wrong angle. I'm at the wrong angle. Turn it, turn it towards the screen. Turn it towards the screen. Like, right, like, put the screen. bottom there, out a little bit. There you go. For you, uh, for you guys, for you guys on the podcast that have no idea what we're doing, uh, Nick and Matt are making heart symbols with their hands. Uh, so now that we uh, let's move past that awkwardness, guys. Let's get into uh, the main conversation tonight. Movie uh, we're trailers. Not, movie trailers. So let's get into movie matters. Hey guys, welcome to Movie Matters. This week, we're not talking about any particular movies at length. We did just get the Comic-Con not too long ago, recently, in yes. fact, in the last couple weeks at the time of the release of this episode. And so there's some trailers of, of some really great movies coming out and some questionable movies that we decided we would give our thoughts and discuss about. So, Nick, I know you've got a list in front of you, or at least I hope you do, of the movies that we've watched. So why don't you kind of guide us title by title, and we will have discussions upon those titles. All right, first one on our list. I actually saw this trailer today, and I was stoked because they've been talking about it forever. Um, there's always that uh, wish as a child in, in our childhood that we'd be a superhero. This one's about a child that becomes a superhero. Back to I the original Captain Marvel. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. No, I mean, what? Mr. Mr. Marvel. Sorry. Back to the Mr. Marvel. Shazam. Shazam. Starring Zachary Levy from uh, one of my favorite shows, uh, Chuck. Um, and, uh, this comes out in April of 2019. Hey, right uh, on my birthday. April what? Wait, is that oh, again? Your birthday. April of 2019. April. I don't have yeah. the exact date. IMDb says April 5th. So we'll hold them to that for now. Two days after, after my birthday. birthday. That's going to be a great present. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, guys. So we'll let, see it together. What, How about that? What, yeah. We all saw the trailer. 
No, he said we'll see it together. No, we'll see it together. Oh, the movie, yes. I, dude, I know. We're t- I know. Sorry. <coughs> I don't know where he's at. Gosh, I'm here I'm now. Just... I'm here now. I'm present. I can hear you. Let's talk about the trailer itself. Um, I like what DC decided to do with this one. Because everyone's been complaining. DC's too dark. DC's too dark. Uh, Superman, they didn't like it because it was too dark. Batman, they didn't like it because it was too dark. And this one, this, yes. they throw dark out the window. And it kind of, it's just really lighthearted, witty. Um, it leans it, into the comedy. Yeah, and I actually like it. Um, it's kind of like a, almost like a coming of age type thing. Even though he's goes from a kid to a giant Kind of, he's Super like, he's adult kinda, human. He's kind of preteen. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. But you can tell he, he acts that out even when he's in, in his superhero side. I, yeah. He, like, even in the comic books, he's always, he's the kid. But Billy Batson. Yeah. DC has done an interesting, I know it's the Comic-Con trailers, but I'm really, like, surprised at this, like... <clears throat> it's not just like a minute and a half trailer and like t- w- traditional form. We're getting the teaser. We're getting trailer one, then trailer two. This came out with like, and I know it's comic con, but like a, almost a three minute trailer on these that we're about to talk about specifically Shazam this time. And they, they covered enough to give you a really solid idea of the direction and plot. Uh, but I don't, f- at least at this point, this I hope is not considered a teaser. I hope this is considered the trailer, because Lord knows they release three of these before the movie comes out. I really hope um, that they don't sh- reveal too much more because I feel like they gave enough um, of of the mo- mood and tone and the general plot. Billy Billy Batson, preteen kid, a foster kid at that, being taken in by this family, getting just beaten up by the bullies of the world um finds himself on a subway at least in this trailer and a quick quick warning guys go watch all these trailers they're all in the show notes um but we will be talking about what was revealed in the trailer so if you Mm want to if you want to stay clear of plot um just look at the timestamps in the episode and skip to the next thing or at least watch the trailers so that being said and Bill- those links will be down below. Yeah, we'll have the links in the description of this show. Um, Billy Batson, continue on, uh, finds himself on a subway heading home or wherever for the day. And then the, the train stops and does this weird magical thing. And next thing you know, this wizard, wizard-like individual comes to him and basically in, imbues him with his power kind of like a passing of the torch kind of scene. And next thing you know, this this preteen kid now has the ability to summon upon... He now gets to be Superman. And we didn't see it in the trailer. Well, not Superman, but yes. He gets to be his idol Superman. The only reason I say that, it's not in the trailer, but from press notes and other information, we know Henry Cavill who is Superman from the movies, is going to have a cameo somewhere in here. It might be in the end credits. No, it's directly tied in with the, the DC Cinematic Universe. So, Okay, well, let me, let me just conclude, and then, Nick, I will look to you for the, the deeper notes that you understand. We know on the surface, just the public in general, that Henry Cavill has some cameos in here. I don't know at what length those are. I'll let Nick speak on that. But essentially, Billy Batson is aware of the existence of Superman, and hopefully, maybe not on the level of like Spider-Man: Homecoming. Hopefully, Tony, like like Tony Stark's, you know, presence was fairly at a minimum. Hopefully, with this, Henry Cavill is literally just kind of more or less the idol that Billy Batson looks up to. And so, what we got to see in the trailer is a bunch of little scenarios where he's Shazam. He doesn't know what his abilities are, and with what seems like his best friend, is discovering those as he comes across them. And so the trailer seemed like a lot of fun. I'm gonna pass it off to you guys. What do you think, uh, Matthew? 
I thought it was actually pretty lighthearted, <clears throat> which, for me, Shazam is a very lighthearted character to begin with, because he is a kid. Kind of like Spider-Man, kind of like The Flash. I like those types of characters. And I think who they have portraying Shazam is a perfect choice. He you like the funny, Zachary funny Levy man. choice? Hmm? You like the Zachary Levy choice? Yes. I know a lot of people were upset about it. Uh, I mean, I, I don't think I could see anybody else doing it that's very lighthearted, that's, I don't know, superhero-y. <laughs> yeah, like, on a side like, note, what, like, Nick, I haven't really heard any of the negativity. I, I know they were ba- a lot of people were bashing the early production photos of his suit, and they were saying that it looked cheesy, cartoony, and it was it was pre-production, so it, it didn't it, have the right lighting. It still is lighting. cheesy and cartoony, but I love it. I it lends to some of the lightheartedness. I will completely agree, but I will also point out that the photo, the production photos that the people saw that they were criticizing was like broad daylight, like very primary red and yellow colors. Um, but in the trailer, there's there's texture and tone to the post production. So although the character's personality and the look of his suit is can still be characterized as cheesy, I don't feel like it looks as cheesy as people were criticizing it pre post. Well, traditionally, uh, Shazam, the the character in the comic books, is portrayed almost big and hulking, um, like boxer style with this big, gigantic, strong chin. Sure. And Zachary Levy doesn't really exude that that feel. Right. But he did get stacked for not stacked, not like Dwayne Johnson, the Rock stacked because yeah. he doesn't have the frame for it. But he did work out. He did a lot of social media posts where he showed, like, you know, to, this guy is really backing up his role. Like, he's been really mm-hmm. headstrong against all the criticism. Um, he's had a lot of positive words, and I've really appreciated Zachary, Zachary Levy for this. Um, but he did bulk up for this role. Like, it's not complete, it's not just the suit. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do. Overall, guys, like, about I'm, the trailer, I'm where it looks exciting and that, like it to does. me, like in contrast to our, <clears throat> our previous DC offerings in the movies. Yes, I think they're like with Wonder Woman and um, Aquaman, which we're about we're going to talk about next. I think there is, there is some good trajectory that we're seeing in these in these movies, well, and it's definitely going to be a change to see him. Uh, see how it goes going from Marvel to DC. Now, hmm? reinform me on his Marvel role because I'm a little vague on that. Oh, uh, since the second movie, uh, Thor: Dark World, uh, he replaced the original actor for Fandral. He's been Fandral the last two movies. Remind me, I'm gonna. You can take Who my nerd that? card if you want, but wh- is that a Thor character? The ones that the the three that go with Thor, um, they've been largely left out of the last couple like films. That's why <laughs> it got really weird when they started making casting changes. Yeah, you know well, what I mean, I, like because yeah, Jamie Alexander who played Sif yeah. as one of the three, you know, basically armored crew with Thor, you know, friends well, of Thor. Yeah, Sif isn't part of the Warriors Three. But the Warriors 3 include Hogan, Fandral, and Volstagg. What role does Sif... Uh, just a side note, because we can cut this part out, but what did Sif play? I mean, who S- is Sif to Sif, Thor? Sif is just another fight uh, warrior of the planet. Um, she's kind of what took over what the Val- Valkyrie were. Oh, huh. so she had nothing to do with being the Warriors 3? Ever? No. She was uh, actually uh, Lady Sif was uh, uh, a love interest for Thor for a long time. Uh, That's why she's so heartbroken about the whole thing with uh, uh, Foster. With Natalie Portman, who's no longer involved, and now we've lost Lady Sif seemingly in the movie. 
Actually, she wasn't there when everything went down, so we don't know what happened. I know. Uh, well, that's what I meant. I didn't mean that we've conclusively mm-hmm. gotten a plot indication of what's happened to her, but yeah. She hasn't. She wasn't in Infinity War anywhere. She wasn't in Thor Ragnarok anywhere. And granted, they were in talk. The Valkyrie herself was more of the focus with that as a side plot. Well, um, Lady Sif is another goddess in Thor mythology. Hmm. They've or, they've played yeah, yeah. very lightly. Goddess, yeah. yeah, but they've they've indicated next to nothing in regards to the films about that role. Right. Yeah. Unfortunately. Well, and that, back to movie trailers. Back to Sorry Shazam. No, it's <laughs> tangents happen and this is all kind of relevant anyway. Um so Shazam's definitely the lighthearted angle DC should should take um to bring in an audience that may have not liked the dark angles mm-hmm. they were taking. Um, and the comedy looks solid. I'm kind of, I'm excited about this one. I would, yeah. I would Same here. Um, directed by David F. Sandberg, who's nothing really like he's known for some horror movies. <laughs> so I don't know where his comical stance is going to come out of all of his, Lights Out, Pictured, Not So Fast, Kofer, Attic, Panic, Closet Space, Lights Out, and he di- directed Annabelle. Annabelle. <laughs> yeah, he does a lot of shorts. So sh- mean... shorts and one horror film, and this guy's going to direct the DC comedy superhero film. Should be interesting. From, I, j- from j- the trailer? To yeah, be fair, to, to be, right, and to be fair, the next film we're about to talk about, Aquaman, it's also, it's also directed by a horror film expert, uh, James Wan. Yes. So, I think that was a good segue. I don't, I'm not going to edit that, Nick, if you're cool with jumping yeah, into the direct. Aquaman talk. Why do I feel For like, sure. I, like, why do I feel I should know that name? James, James Wan? James Wan? Saw? Mm. You definitely should know James Wan. Um. um yeah, hold on. Wan. James Wan. Uh, he is known as a writer for the original Saw. He didn't direct it. He's but a, he is a good writer. He's a producer That's... for The Conjuring Two. He directed Furious Seven. Yeah, and he uh, di- he was the director of the first Conjuring. Executive producer of all the Saws from two to f- six. So he's heavily involved. No seven. Yeah. Yeah, heavily involved um, in that. So Annabelle Lee, Demonic, Insidious. James. Wall. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. See, um, I, I, I knew that name. There and he, Saw is actually one of my favorite freaking horror movies. Yes, Just for the simple fact that yes. it was like a different take on a horror movie. Nerdentials fans will be familiar with Matt's interest in the Saw franchise. Yes. But, uh, no, it seems like uh, Aquaman, once you watch that, that trailer, like watch it now real quick. Just give it a second. Click play. Click right. play, <laughs> pause us, um, and come back. <laughs> hey. <laughs> but now, now that you saw that... Um, it's the other end of it. It's not the dark. You still have the seriousness behind it, but there's almost like a, they did the Thor treatment to this, where you get oh, the action, sure. the ac- the actual action hero. It's not superhero nitty gritty. This is what's going on. It's you get some origin. You get some like um, best way I could put it is Jason Momoa badassery. Ah. Right. Oh wait, sorry. wrong movie. <laughs> However. <laughs> Uh, the other thing that can be said for, um, like director James Wan and his direction for this film, um, he's quoted, I don't have the article in front of me, but he was quoted as describing this film, uh, in his own words as being Indiana Jones under the sea. Um, the trailer did show quite an epic nature to it with like a, f- a flurry of locations underwater and above land. Um, he's even quoted as saying that Aquaman will, will be more global than just one location. Um, and it will, it won't be completely under the sea. Um, the thing I thought was interesting is the brief scene we saw in <clears throat> under think, the sea 
Honda the C. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the 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 brief scene we saw in um sorry to bring this movie up guys Justice League Justice League Is that... <laughs> but hold on hey you guys you say, so I'm not something? the only thing I'm referencing is a a brief stint under the sea here we go now in Justice League, we're not going to talk about the quality of that film, we're not going to talk about the plot, we're not going to talk about anything other than the scene where they showed Jason Momoa underwater with Mira briefly in in a water scene, presumably near Atlantia. And in that scene, the thing I was most impressed about, just in that scene alone, was just how good it looked seeing them underwater with their hair moving and waving and it didn't look particularly overly cg'd or anything like the and it didn't look overly animated or super cheesy it looked well it looked well structured you know i can't say the same for the main bad guy in the in that damn movie (laughs) but we're not talking about the villain of that film we're just talking about the aquaman scene now go back to the trailer for Aquaman, we got to see a lot of that. We got to see Arthur Curry, Jason Momoa, talking in underwater scenes where it, it sounds a little, little tunnely, but it didn't. It didn't seem like blue, 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 blue. You know what I mean? Like obviously, there's a little fantasy. You guys got to suspend your disbelief for some of these moments. But his hair was waving. As if underwater while he was saying a few lines. And I thought this is going to be really interesting to see play out in in the full film. So I'm very curious as to what that's going to look like. What do you guys think overall? I, last point. Uh, sorry. Overall, they said Indiana Jones. But I saw just a small flavoring of like... Like... Lord of the Rings, like, large armies above sea and below sea. I would more go towards that route. I don't know how much of this is going to be. Indiana Jones is a little more intimate, a little more action-adventure intimate. A lot of the scenes we saw seemed kind of on a larger scale. So, I'm excited, but I'm also kind of like holding my breath to see how some of those epic scenes played out. The one scene I can appreciate out of Justice League was it was completely misplaced and completely convoluted that Wonder Woman would be sharing an epic tale of fantasy to Cyborg in the middle of the alley about the history of the Atlanteans and the Amazonians fighting it out and fighting the new gods. Right. Very misplaced in that movie. But that was kind of the scale that I'm seeing here in this Aquaman trailer. So I'm going to shut up now and let Matt and Nick share some thoughts on this. Um, there's a lot I'm actually excited about. Um, you're, you're getting a lot of the history and a lot of the rogues closet for Aquaman real fast. His brother, um, ruler of Atlantis. Um, you're getting, um, if anyone caught it, Black Manta. Mm-hmm. And they're not, they're keeping his look like oh, the yeah. massive helmet, like comic book authentic. I love I'm, it. I'm, so, I'm sorry, that was sexy. Um, I think he's going to be the um, Killmonger of the DC Universe. He's going to kind of fill that role. Possibly. And I think he's going to kind of um, fill that really well. Um, the other one we saw, I'm trying to remember, I think they're called the Tritons. Um, when he's jumping off the, the boat with right. the the flares in hand and those gnarly looking critters that are there mm-hmm. all surrounding the boat and like going after him, I think those are called the Tritons. Um, it's right. another it's another underwater race like the Atlanteans, but they're kind of like feral. Um, I like who they picked for um, um, Arthur Curry's father. Um, yeah, um, hold Tamura on. Tamura Morrison is... Was it, oh, yeah, Thomas Curry, his father. Yeah. Um, you'll most know him for, like, uh, Boba Fett. 
Yeah. Exactly. Oh snap! Yes, that was him. Yeah. Oh, and uh, small known fact. Sorry, fans, if you hate me for this reference. But in the 2011 Ryan Reynolds film of Green Lantern, he played the purple alien Abin Sur. He did, yes. He did. He did. <laughs> and there's nothing to apologize about there. I'm one of the few people that loved Green Lantern. I'm sorry. It was it was awfully written. Enter and the, the hate sucked, mail. But Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> and now we fantastic. lost about 15 <laughs> of our <laughs> listeners. <laughs> um, you're right. He played Jango Fett, though, for, yeah. as far as Star Wars goes. And go young Bob Fett. Go on, dude. Go on. So, um, um, and I, I kind of like the the you kind of see in the the trailer the underwater fight scene when they're in like this arena type thing. Mm-hmm. That was kind of cool it, looking. It's, it's almost treated mo- less like a gladiatorial combat, and the way the people are reacting on the outside more like a soccer game or something. Right. Just like. Ah! <laughs> there was, I, yeah, they, they kind of inserted a little bit of, like, uh, comical peppering into the film by kind of showcasing this, like, sporting event reaction of a crowd right. underwater. Epic sea creatures. Um, whole a whole bunch of, of them. Uh, Yeah, a whole bunch of uh, um, big actors. Um, Let me list Nicole, a couple. Nicole Kidman. Um, oh, she plays. Oh, Qu- uh, sorry, no, you're you're on the right p- uh, right path. Nicole Kidman is Queen Atlanta, so that's like Arthur Curry's mother. Mm-hmm. Um, someone not as well known, but uh, Amber Heard is going to be playing kind of the uh, Arthur Curry love interest of Mira. She's she's been in films like The Rum Diary, Three Days to Kill. Uh, Machete kills. That's an inter- That was an interesting movie. Um, and oh, she obviously in Justice League. She made that brief cameo as Mira. Um, other actors though, we've got Patrick Wilson, who's playing Orm, the Ocean Master. You've got Dolph Lundgren as King Nereus, and yeah. uh, Willem Dafoe. Willem Dafoe, yeah. As uh, looks like Nuitus Volko. Are you are you familiar with that character, Nick? Uh, yeah, he's kind of a, uh, um, he's the person that teaches all Atlanteans magic. Oh, okay. In- yeah, because isn't in Atlantis, um, there's the the warriors and then there's the sorcerers. There's actually a lot of magic to go along with the the science behind it. Every time I think of Willem William Defoe, though, I'm always thinking of Willem Hobgoblin. Willem or Green Goblin. Oh, sorry, Willem. Oh. Or any of you, Bo- or any of you, Boondock Saints fans. He played the detective, yeah. the uh, the the cross dressing. Yeah. That's the first detective. movie I ever think of with Willem. That Saints one, and, uh, uh, Saints, Boondock yeah. Saints. Saints is one of my favorite movies. Yeah. But yep. Did, did you uh, list Patrick Wilson? Yeah, Patrick Wilson is playing Orm. He was in the trailer there. I uh, we see briefly. And last time we saw him, technically in a DC movie, was Watchmen. I was going to say, was that Watchmen? Where he was yeah. Oh, and he, he was he was Owlman. Owlman. He was, yeah. yeah, he was Owlman, and he had a little bit of weight to him, too, at that time. Yeah, yeah. Watchmen was a good movie. Sure. Anyway, back on track. So He's a good bad guy. Nick, yeah, you and me have, have exploited a lot of details... Matthew, overall concluding thoughts on the Aquaman trailer? And my concluding thoughts is it's this one's probably like I said uh, before, it's gonna save DC, I think. That and Shazam. It's gonna at least continue bo- bolstering the upward trajectory yes. for DC films. It's no longer going downhill for DC. I think with these two films, they are gonna be going back up. Well, you heard it here first, guys. Nick? Yeah, I'll, I'll just leave it there. There was another trailer with DC that it was actually a TV show. Uh, mixed feelings for people. See, that's I, not... don't, I, don't, I don't put that with the DC. What, this is Big like Matt, Matt's thoughts are purely related to, to movies, the cinematic but, universe. Yeah, not, yeah. To, not to the TV series. Uh, we're not talking about... Teen cause, Titans. Because the thing... Yeah, because the thing with um, the DC franchise as a whole, 
Um, it's ebbed and flowed and wavered across all areas. Yeah. It's it's soared on prime time television. Um, we can oh, yeah. get we can get into the other that other thing a little bit in a little bit, but but going back to um, Shazam for a second, um, just to tell show you where it's it's still all in the same universe. Um, at forty seconds into the trailer, I think it's forty forty one forty two, right around there. The Bat Blade. There's not just the Bat Blade. He opens up the drawer and there's newspapers in there. Mm-hmm. Daily Planet, Superman, all these things. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm wondering where both these movies are going to fall within the timeline. It almost looks like the first one here is more kind of fallen towards uh, before Justice League. Yeah, it's a good possibility. Yeah. yeah. But I, I, think it might be, like, I, I think what it is is it's going to be kind of during Justice League. That way it kind of ties in like, hey, we have a new person that we want to join our team there's other here there's other <laughs> things happening in the world during this major event yeah. yes um and then obviously aquaman's gonna be after the fact because of the you think aquaman. aquaman's gonna be after the movie yeah i feel like well because in the in the trailer or it's gonna hit both sides in the trailer he is being told do you guys remember the scene with Mira? Because in, in the she, trailer of Aquaman, it seems like he doesn't really know who Mira is when when he meets her in the in the Aquaman movie trailer. But in Justice League, it seems like he knows who she is. No, Something to I, think about. I, I think I think he tries to play it off. Well, and you're also looking at some of the origins too right. in the Aquaman trailer. They do so show I him wonder, as a kid. Yeah, this this might fill that that space where it shows a lot happening before and then it flash forwards right to when Dur- it's happening for justice league too. during or right before maybe. Yeah. Well, the reason why I say it, I'm thinking that it's going to be after is the fact that his brother takes the throne when the throne is still open in justice league. Oh, okay. That's a small detail. I'm not like I'm a little foggy yeah. on. Hmm. We'll definitely have to figure out where that lies in the 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 continuum. Let's dig into um, DC a little more next time. Maybe yeah. I took on a little bit more than I could. All chew right. Chew. For no, our next, it, that was like one of the small details that I th- that I yeah. saw from Justice League. I was like, nobody. Matthew, the ruler. that's a good point. Mm-hmm. We'll come back to that. We'll look into it a little further. Because I'm sure we could dig something out of that. Nick, take us forward. For our next movie, um, everyone is jumping on the bandwagon of shared cinematic universes. Everyone. Everyone. And this one has a twist. A twist. Maybe. I might be wrong. Go on, Nick. Because all those movies have a twist. Fantastic Beasts? No. No. Talking about... uh, Our next movie is going to be this... The actual conglomeration of a shared universe by M. Night Shyamalan. Oh. oh where we are finally getting a train wreck of movies that we didn't know were part of each other until the last few minutes of Split. The last where Bruce two minutes, Willis's barely. character. Uh, I, would, I would even say like the last 30 seconds. 30 seconds even. Like, that was yeah. barely even a 30 second tease. Yeah. But. We I are getting. When I saw that. So let's refer- so Willis. we're referencing the movie Split a couple years ago, starring yep. James McAvoy with mm-hmm. twenty plus personalities. Twenty-two. Yeah. And, and and the personalities actually change him physically, mm-hmm. which is intense. Yeah, like like physically, physically, like he can go to being a little kid and being very weak physically. To being like a uh, like this strong strapping dude that's just ready to rip you apart, and it just kind of comes out the of nowhere. Beast. Yeah. Well, the beast, all of his personalities are afraid of. Up. Spoiler warning: If you guys haven't seen the previous ones, you need to go see them. Yeah. Right, right. Uh, and the first one that's actually started it all is Unbreakable. Bruce Willis in all his glory. Bruce and Willis. That was and a great movie. Samuel L. Jackson. Samuel Jackson's and everything. Uh, well, this is true, but this is this is actually There's like some snakes on this podcast. 
Wait. Th- this is like... <laughs> wrong movie. This is like 16 plus years in the making, guys, because oh, yeah. Unbreakable was t- came out in 2000. Mm-hmm. 19 um, years. Yeah, ridiculous. Um, it was a suspense thriller um, where, let's see, uh, David Dunn... They call it a suspense thriller? Yeah. Uh, it was yeah, it was yeah, classified yeah. as a superhero much, action not, movie. Yeah, it was it was almost they treated his his evolution into the superhero powers as almost like a thriller, like what's going on? I don't understand this. And it was it was more of they tried giving it the whole like he's scared of this, which is understandable. Right. But and then they played the whole fact and then But the general premise was he was on a train crash. 131 people died, and he didn't have a, and he didn't have a scratch on him. And then he also recalled over the years that he's never been sick, like no head colds or anything. Um, and then he came across. Um, was it Samuel Jackson, his character that came across that? Started Samuel Jackson about it, pr- uh, came to him, proposed uh, a theory behind. What's yep. going on with him? Mm-hmm. Um, and started making him believe that he was something of of supernatural in nature or superhero almost. Yep, a superhuman, a superhuman, as it were. Yes, and that with that storyline, I mean, he walks by some people and he could see like what's going on, and then at towards like the end of the movie, he finds a bad guy, and. Uh-huh. Saves some, saves a family, and yeah, that that movie was great. And then yeah. seeing him at the end of Split, I freaked out. Like I just went, like I literally screamed in the movie theater. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, and the new new movie, since we haven't said it yet, is going to be called Glass. That that's Mister Glass. No, that's his name. The movie's I know. called Glass. <laughs> <laughs> So, I want to read this description. You guys tell me if this seems accurate to what we saw in the trailer. Following the conclusion of Split, Glass finds Dunn pursuing Crumb's superhuman figure of the Beast in a series of escalating encounters, while the shadowy presence of Price emerges as an orchestrator who holds secrets critical to both men. So, like, Samuel Jackson is kind of using Dunn, Bruce Willis, to find the split personality beast guy. Um, But all three of these men, at least in the trailer, were being held under observation Mm -hmm. by none other than Sarah Paulson, um, who's listed here as Dr. Ellie Staple. So she's kind of like this psychiatrist chick who's got all three of these men under observation in the trailer. Um, but it seems like Mr. Glass, Mr. Samuel Jackson is, tr- has, has deeper motives behind these two individuals. He, he's, he's a super genius. Yeah. He's, he, he breaks hundreds of bones. He's very fragile physically, but he has like the biggest IQ in the world. And he can figure things out really fast. He can break out of the prison, which looks like it will happen. Um, and at some point, he coerces the beast into fighting Mr. Bruce Willis. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, oh, man. James McAvoy, Bruce Willis, and Samuel L. Jackson. All in the same room. Those, those three actors that's powerful like and we're looking good. at yeah i'm gonna say it's a 10 out of 10 for me like right off the bat like i don't even care we're I love... looking at a release date on that for january of 2019 yes january 18th to mm-hmm. be exact and Aquaman, since we didn't say it before, December 21st. December 21st. 2018. And on a side note, I think Aquaman, regardless of how like good it actually is, I think will do fairly well because Star Wars came out 
during in the summer. The, during the summer, and there is no Star Wars film slated for December, so I think it has a better chance. Nope, the next uh, Star Wars movie is Episode Nine comes episode out nine. next December. Yes, next December. So, anyway, those are a couple side notes mm-hmm. there, but excited to see what happens with that. Can't wait for that. Sorry, that's a side tangent. No, Anyways. anyway, Nicholas, take us on forward. Not all of us are excited about this as much as some of us, but this uh, <laughs> I am a fan from my childhood. It, it's This has been something that's been near and dear to my heart all throughout my childhood. I've watched the black and white movies. I've watched the, the what was it, Matthew Broderick, two, 1998 version of it, the 2001, the 2003, the 2007. Um, you liked the Broderick one? I watched all of them. I did too, but if I was a fan of the original Kaiju, I don't know how I'd feel about that one. Well, I wasn't a big fan of it. There was things I liked about it and things they touched on it that they needed to. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, but the thing I am talking about is the King of the Lizards. I'm talking about Godzilla, King of the Monsters. Go, go, so not so wait, hold up, hold up. So not King of the Lizards. You know what I meant. <laughs> Don't start. The fight. Go on. In, in a world of superheroes, this is definitely one that we can't pass up. Because well, hold on, he's a superhero. I'm sorry. Nick can't hold pass on. it up. Hold on. Give him hold a on. break. Now you said you enjoyed the originals. Like mm-hmm. I, I am a huge fan of the originals. Anything after. I think the last one was in 76. Anything after that, I'm not a big fan of. Like, uh... Did you even uh, check out the Brian Cranston Godzilla? It was actually one? really good. I didn't. You didn't? To be honest. No, I'm not. <sighs> then your foundation is flawed, sir. Yeah. I mean, the Matthew Broderick one, that one kind of actually made me giggle. More okay. so than... What That's why I liked it. That's why I liked it. It was funny. <laughs> yeah. But I like the... Fr- what really made me laugh was the French dudes. <laughs> yeah. We're American. <laughs> Sorry. No, uh, but, it's just... The, yeah. the new one here, it's it's a direct sequel to um, the one with Brian Cranston. Okay. It makes sense because it's... Their consistency with... Oh, and that, yeah. okay. Verifying here's the thing. The, yeah. Yeah, here's the thing you guys don't understand. Um, I don't know if people realize this. This is going to be a shared universe. It makes this, they're bringing out the kaiju. What? Um, Who does that anymore? Who shares their universe? I'm telling you, not anyone in like Hollywood. Um, Skull oh, Island? Wait. Hold up. Skull Island was their I just approach. realized what the hell you just said. Kaiju. Uh huh. Yeah, like, I'm not, talking like not just Godzilla. Uh huh. Oh my god. Uh, on a side note, guys, I'm showing him the trailer right now, <laughs> so that he can kind of just get a glimpse. All of... the big creatures have always been called kaiju, but he actually shows off his blast from it, from his breath ray, like the Godzilla, the classic Godzilla. Right. They they might not tie directly in with the Pacific Rim, but there's the whole idea behind it that there they... always has to be. Wait, go on, Nick. Is that an Mothra? alpha? Yeah, they're bringing Mothra, King Ghidorah. This is all pushing towards a big fight between Godzilla and King Kong again. Oh, what? That's snap. why they did Skull Island. This is all going to tie together. No. Yes. Oh, look. They They've had talked about the this devil for himself. years. Yeah, I saw that. Sorry. Well, the devil plus um, <laughs> vampire plus, yeah, whatever. Huh. You'll have to watch that with full audio later, Matthew. I wanted to play that for you because I knew, like, I didn't get it jump with excitement, but I like what they're doing with it. Um, I mean, and if, Matt just if... wasn't, Matt just didn't have any clue that this, these are the things that they were doing with it. That actually might get me back into it. Not gonna yeah. lie. Because Mothra, that's... Mm-hmm. 
something not to bat an eye at. That's um, the, even the is. the Pacific Rim Uprising director has mm-hmm. even said there is a very big possibility that they're going to do a crossover between Pacific Rim and the Godzilla franchise. Guillermo del Toro directed but, the first one. And this is called the Monster Verse. Stephen S. DeKnight right. did the second one. Well, at this point, why wouldn't you throw a Rampage into that? No, I'm just kidding. Rampage is a video game. Oh, no. Um, Stephen S. DeKnight directed the original Daredevil. Wait, no, I'm just kidding. That's uh, Netflix's Daredevil Season 1. Hmm. Huh. Actually, is what he directed. And Spartacus. And that's... Ooh, I like Spartacus. And he was a writer for 2001 to 2002 of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. It kind of sucks that the main actor for Spartacus died. But anyways, that's a sad tangent. That is a tangent. Um, huh. Interesting. Yeah, King uh, Godzilla vs. Kong is in develop right now. Godzilla vs. Kong? Mm-hmm. That... There it is, 2020, guys. We're looking it up right now. And look, Denai Guerrera, good old Michonne, has already been cast in there. And Millie Bobby Brown to continue. Yeah, Millie and, Bobby Brown is in Godzilla, Kyle King of Chandler. Monsters. Kyle Chandler. These are the Those are the confirmed cast currently up to this point. It's in pre-production right now. So does that bring it more exciting to you, Matt? They're bringing um, back the original kaiju. Let me give this example, Matthew. In 2020, Godzilla vs. Kong, it says, The gigantic Kong meets the unstoppable Godzilla. The world watches to see which one becomes the king of all monsters. Godzilla. Well, how are they going to do that, though, honestly? I mean, the, the Freddy vs. J- Jason <coughs> fiasco. I mean, come on. Jason walked out of the water with Freddy's head in his hand, and he blinked. Neither of them died. So what are they going to do with this franchise? And neither one of them did. I know. I was shooting for the stars there. No, the the Brian Cranston one, it was it was kind of interesting. And it, it's definitely worth watching if you haven't watched it, Matt. Um, they make it almost more suspenseful. I feel bad, but I've gotten like a half hour into it. And I watched it back when I lived with Lynn and Robin, if you can believe that. Yeah, it, it's Side a slow it's start, but it's definitely worth it. Hmm. I was excited. I just... Didn't hit play once I got home from Nevada. Yeah. That's just one of those things that happened. All right, the next one. I'm gonna let Matt lead this one because he's really excited about this one. The Wizarding World with Dumbledore and Newt Scamander brings like an all-time high with Johnny Depp reprising his role as Grindelwald. This movie looks phenomenal. It's and not... I love J.K. Rowling's mind and storytelling through this whole series of movies and new <sighs> screenplays. It's just phenomenal. Um, I, I, to me, to be honest, this is what should have been with Harry Potter. Like in her own, darker... in her own words, this series of movies is the darker direction she'd been itching to do during the Harry Potter writing. Yep. She's yes. actually said that. So Well and there's a lot of cool things about this. Like they introduced some characters in their younger years that we've always wondered about. Like a super young Dumbledore. Played, played by, by another uh, none other than Jude Law. Which I think is a good pick, to be honest. I want to see more. I, I really, I really don't think that I could think of anybody else that could play a young Dumbledore. I don't know what I pictured, but like in the few phrases he says to Newt Scamander in the trailer, he had he had kind of just the right inflection that you could still, if you really just look at him while he's talking, you can kind of picture him turning into the Dumbledore we know. Right, instead of just the professor. Yeah. Of... Cause he, but he played the professor role. Like, we got to see a recreation. Sorry, just a quick note. In the trailer, we see a young 
Newt Scamenter about the age of Harry Potter learning the ridiculous spell ridiculous. And, and and taking their greatest fears as students and then dispelling them into something funny and goofy. And they kind of recreated that scene with Hermione and Harry Potter from from the Harry Potter movies, but with a young Newt Scamander. I thought that was really cool. It was Harry Potter and Prisoner of Azkaban that yeah. that would be in. And it was Professor Lupin that was teaching at that point. Yes. There's and definitely some things that look really cool. Yeah. Yes. And the fact that they're bringing back every cast member from the first movie from the first fantastic beast yeah is just it's my it, it's the, very awesome the the little side interest that i'm taking in this trailer aside from the cool the just the plot and the action and then really seeing like Johnny Depp actually take on the role, like we're actually seeing him give some lines and actually interact with the characters in this trailer. The other aspect I I'm liking and I hope they maintain it throughout all five of these films is in the title Fantastic Beasts, we're still seeing a, a wide array of really cool looking creatures. Like, they, they showcased a couple really crazy, oddball-looking creatures in here, even ones that weren't shown in the first film, and I love that little as that little flavor aspect to this franchise. I think it's kind of like the through line. Yes, we're getting the backstory of Dumbledore and Grindelwald, their relationship, why it fell apart. We're going to get to see some of that. Um, and we're getting to see other wizarding schools around the world. I think we're in Paris for this one. Um, uh, J.K. Rowling said that she wants to visit, you know, different parts of the world and showcase that Hogwarts wasn't the only school. And also in in theme with the title Fantastic Beasts and Newt Scamander seemingly now continuing to continue continuing to take on that lead role and possibly through all five films um we're continuing to see his his love of these beasts because it's even quoted in the trailer that um there's no beast he couldn't love is what she said in regards to newt scamander and i love that and so we're love even the ugliest beast even the ugliest beast and so we're gonna keep seeing that i I feel like through all these films and i like that i'm i'm really excited and love that about it nick nick matt any other thoughts Uh, about it um i'm gonna see it opening night that's all i know it's gonna be good i'm excited this is one we might have to double. Uh, well, you and me might have to go on a bro date. Yeah, you know? no, I'm sorry. Bro date. No popcorn trick, Matt. No popcorn trick. No popcorn no, trick. Tell my secrets. Wait, Joe. Wait. Joe. No matter what he says, the butter isn't at the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's good. Uh, and it's all not. Right. It's not butter. I'm on it. <clears throat> Don't, um, even, don't even worry. The next one, Matt. I'm going to let you lead this one, too. You actually told me about it and surprised the heck out of me, so I went and looked it up. Oh. Talking about Bumblebee. Yeah. Yes, you, sir. You read my my blips. Yes. Uh, okay. Bumblebee comes out, which I thought it was in September. I'm pretty sure they pushed it back. Cause, yes. But it comes out in December, yeah. right about the same time Aquaman. Um, and it's... That's crazy. Sleep. Same day. Oh, okay, same day. December 21st. And it's slated uh, in the 80s, and it has uh, John Cena as an agent, field agent, um, looking for Transformers. Obviously, this is prior to Optimus Prime getting there. Um, and yeah, because in the first one... Oh, sorry. Sorry. Uh, what the heck is her name? Haley Seyfried or Haley... Sandfield, Are Haley. Are you something. talking about the actress? Yeah, yeah, Haley Steinfeld. Haley Steinfeld. She actually finds a bug, aka Bumblebee. So it's like the original Autobot Bumblebee, to be honest. Yeah. Which, if you're a Transformers fan, that should hit you right in the field of goods. 
right in the feels. I like it. Um, I'm excited about this. This this has an Iron Giant, call back anyone, feel to it, where a robot befriends a kid, um, and a government is chasing after it once it's discovered. So, it, it, you know, it's not a story that's never been told, but keeping with the, the, the time period of the 80s, um, giving it that, that human robot, like, sweet connection that it could have, I think this film has a lot of potential to be very endearing and, and kind of like a back to form for fans of the Autobots. And not directed by Michael Bay. And we're pulling away um, from the explosion gasm of the last several films. Yeah, it's going to be directed by uh, Travis Knight. Yes. Yes, Travis Knight. Uh, known for some new newer ones, uh, mostly uh, actual um, animated He movies. directed Kubo and the Kubo, Two Strings. Paranorman, Box Trolls. Paranorman. Yeah. He's a Carol- producer on, on those, yeah. yeah. Caroline, he was in the animation department. All of them. He's worked. Um, he's worked for Leica, which is the stop motion animation film production or production group. Um, under all those titles, yeah. Which kind of gives me hope for this this movie. As and, far as the, as the story, even like. Well, all his movies have heart. Yeah, yeah that's I think what that's, I'm saying. Yeah, and, and with with that, like it, this one, kind of ties into the last Transformers movie, The Last Night, because they talk about Bumblebee being back in 1942 as a World War II jeep Mm -hmm. and helping out defeat the Germans 1945-ish. Yeah. Um, Something about there, but I mean, but he doesn't remember that part of his life Mm -hmm. and uh, with this this 80s take on it, it kind of... Do you think this will be before the damage? Do you think this will be before, before the damage? I think so. Damage of his vocal. A bumblebee. He's never been able to talk. His, he, his vocal processor's been messed up. Yes, and I don't think they're going to have him talk because the trailer shows him using a, the cassette player. She puts in a cassette tape, and he actually uses dialogue from the cassette tape to talk to her. So I don't think we're going to get his voice at all because even so in the description it says... After, it no. says... It says... Turning... Um, <clears throat> Haley Steinfeld, Charlie, the character on the cusp of turning 18 and trying to find her place in the world, discovers Bumblebee battle-scarred and broken. Oh, when Charlie re- when Charlie revives him, she quickly learns this is no ordinary yellow Volkswagen bug. So he's so, she finds him broken and he right, so, so this he's is after the damage. Mm-hmm. This is after and this is 1987 is exactly the time when this is taking place. So it it doesn't look like yeah, it looks like we're going to get the Bumblebee we've already seen, which is going to make it a little bit kind of like an E.T. connection. A child trying to learn how to communicate with her new alien friend. This I don't think this is going to be the Bumblebee we've seen, because he's still the Volkswagen bug. Uh-huh. So he's going to have the look of the Volkswagen bug, so his 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 he's not going to look as sleek as he does in the new movies. He's going to have those rounded features. Uh-huh. Right. Um, and it's it's almost going to give him an more towards like a a teen adolescent feel, the way yeah. he talks and the way he acts and stuff, because I don't think he's going to be pushed into the role he is now. No, he's not with the group of Autobots. Yeah. He's all right. by himself at this point, and he doesn't have any memory of why he's battle scarred and broken either. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, um, John yeah. Cena in it. This and is. Ca- Yes, John Cena is in it. A quick side note. This is kind of like... Bumblebee is basically kind of like a man out of time. Or the character is a character out of time. But... more, I guess more like a character with amnesia. So it's kind of just going to be like this... Timid robot... Trying to understand... These humans... Or this human who's befriending him. You know? Yeah. Um... But I think uh, this is all going to be the start of Sector 7. Yes, this, it, this would be the start of Sector 7. Because they, t- they 
Well, no, no, no. Sector 7 started back in 1945. Oh, but it's it's going to be the a younger version. The Resurgence, perhaps? Maybe yeah. the Resurgence. Since John Cena is helming as an agent who's pursuing this. Because remember, uh, the Hoover Dam was built around Megatron. Mm-hmm. And this is before that. In the plot. Or, I mean, this is after that, but before that movie the original transformers right and For i mean sure. and they talk and they talk about sector 7 and depending on how well this movie does it may continue or rewrite the current right. the the movie canon right which is kind of what they were i think they were hoping for by letting michael bay move on with different things and trying to continue Making Transformers a viable franchise? Well, yeah, because they were wanting to slate nine movies or ten movies. Ten movies of Transformers. It's always a ten movie deal. What's going on, guys? So this would be number six, technically. Uh, The seventh one pretty much is on the hinges if this does good. Which, if... Any Transformer fan out there is an old school Autobot fan. They're going to be hyped for this movie. There's, I know I am. There's some solid promise behind the trailer. Yes. And the people behind it. That being said, Nicholas, take us forward, won't you? Yeah. Um, this one's going to be by uh, 20th Century Fox. Um, comes out August 3rd of this year. It's coming right up. Um, people have probably seen the pre- the trailer for it. It's just we haven't covered anything on it. Uh, this is uh, called The Darkest Minds. I got a quick synopsis here of it um, that I can read. Um, when teens mysteriously develop powers, new abilities, they are declared a threat by the government and detained. 16-year-old Ruby, one of the most powerful young people anyone has encountered, escapes her camp and joins a group of runaway teens seeking safe haven. Soon, this newfound family realizes that in a world in which adults in power have betrayed them, running is not enough, and they must wage a resistance using their collective power to take back control of their future. We got a lot of... What? Sorry, man. I mean to interrupt you, but I just wanted to throw this out there. I did not realize what role she had played, because obviously she's still a very young actress, but Mm -hmm. um, the lead uh, female character... uh, Amandla? I, I apologize to anyone that knows how to pronounce her name Amanda properly. Stenberg. It's got a Amand L-A is how her name yeah. is spelled. Amandla. Uh, Amanda. St- Amandla Stenberg um, plays Ruby in this movie. Uh, the most notable role, I haven't seen the other films she's been in, but the one I'm most familiar with is her 2012 portrayal as the, t- the little frail girl known as Rue from the Hunger Games that Jennifer mm. Lawrence befriended uh, and who sadly got killed, but that's crazy. Um, anyway, she's clearly going to be doing a lot more movies down the line. Uh, every th- everything Everything, which just came out last year, I haven't gotten to see it yet. I actually saw that. Was it good? Did you like it? Because it's about this girl who thinks she's sick and and is being kept inside her home. Well, she is she is sick, um, right? So it's kind of like that, that's same... like a coming of age movie. I don't mean to yeah. get on a big tangent, guys. Um, but Matt, do you recommend that movie? On a side note, I recommend it. Um, it definitely touches the feels because it, it it goes along with kind of the story, like a story of love that's very forbidden um yeah and yeah she's sick and meets this guy that's her next door neighbor um mm-hmm. she's allergic basically to everything that's outside uh pollen whatever uh grass sunlight even um and her mom freaks out and whatnot but at the end she is fine and yeah, it's a good coming but, of age story with a lot of heart. It, it is. Um, um, on that note, w- w- 
with I'm, this movie coming out, <laughs> what this kind of reminds me of, oh, it's like man. X-Men ver- like meets... It, it's uh, being put out by 20th Century Fox, right, Nick? Mm-hmm. The, the yeah. darkest minds. And the first thing I said, like two seconds into the trailer when we see these kids with powers, is like, <gasps> prequel to the X-Men? <laughs> well, what it what it reminds me of is like X Men versus like meets um, the Fifth Wave. That's interesting. Did you are you basing it off your book knowledge or the films? The book knowledge. Okay, because I was like, wave, I haven't seen the movies wave, and they did not do that well. Uh, the Fifth Wave, the books were really good. Um, it but gives what, me but hope. what it but what it does is. Um, it's kind of the same thing where there are kids going out, figuring out things about the government that they don't really know what's going on. They just know that the adults get killed and the kids basically stay and being captured and then they're used for um, government things. And it just, it just kind of seems like that note, and uh, and with a like a slight taste of divergent in that at like, because you've got people that are force abilities, fire abilities, man, that dude. sort of thing. Sorry. I, no, no, no. I'm not criticizing your diver divergence of this <laughs> episode. I'm I'm just like. Man, there is a lot of post-apocalyptic storylines out there. A lot of young adult novels being produced left and right. Um, I mean, five years ago, it was vampires. Now it's children surviving and taking out adults. Mm -hmm. But all joking aside, there's been a lot of good stuff out there. Nick, thoughts? The Darkest Mind is actually a book series. Yeah. Right. All of these movies, The Hunger Games, The Fifth Wave, those are all movies and they're all books. That's what I'm saying is like Hollywood's trying to eat up these young adult novels based on post apocalyptic earth. Well, they one of the things that I was pure. Yeah. But never mind, anyways. One of the things I thought was interesting about this and it kind of stirred the whole thought about the whole thing in my head was it's from the producers of Stranger Things. Yes. Mm-hmm. The, the, and, the, and the arrival. The Russo brothers? Duffer mm-hmm. Brothers. God, Duffer I'm brothers. stupid. We did a whole deep dive episode on it. The Duffer Brothers. That's kind of, that's cool. They told us, uh, we because we knew they were doing some side projects outside of Stranger Things. Didn't know it was going to be this. It almost makes me wonder if uh, the whole idea of Stranger Things came from some of the powered people in this. Because the powers are similar. Well, we, we got through all the movie lists, so might as well talk about a few shows. Like... Stranger Things, three, season three coming. And there's a trailer that we've all talked about. Might as well throw it in there, right? Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. I just have to get my bearings for a second here. You know where I'm going with this. Uh, listeners, I'm going to just peel back the curtain for a split second because I feel like it makes us connected to you guys a little more. Uh, Nick referenced not more than three minutes ago unbeknownst to you because i cut it out um there was a stranger things teaser that came out for season not three reference. not nick it was me nick matt oh god People. i'm sorry anyway matthew takes the credit here credit where credit is due matthew <laughs> pointed this out and me and nick were like well hold no pause pause we're stopping we're looking and um, so, so we're going to talk about that trailer briefly here. So let's talk about some some TV show trailers that have us talking. All right, Nick, <laughs> back to you. <laughs> um, well, the Stranger Things, yeah, yeah, Stranger Things. So there's a teaser, but let's give it context real quick, just just briefly, just because it's I think it's crazy uh, what they put out there. So Matt, you said Comic Con. Mm-hmm. Middle of Comic Con, they dropped this trailer, uh, and it's like a, it's like a straight nineteen eighties TV commercial, advertising the mall, a new shopping center where both adults, children, and yes, even teenagers, can enjoy themselves and buy things of all kinds. I'm paraphrasing, but I, in Hawkins, 
in Hawkins, yes, right before the mall drop, they advertised the city of Hawkins, and fans at Comic Con erupted, realizing Hawkins. Whoa, this is this is something from Stranger Things, because the fandom is real, guys. Uh, yeah. In sh- in short summary, it was the cheesiest, most '80s commercial you can imagine, showcasing all the features of what a mall is. Because at the time, this was a very New concept. Uh, The food court, eating food, uh, showing a pair of teenagers making out in front of the, uh, like a fountain. They were, right? But but they they said where people can enjoy themselves and they show a pair of teens kissing or whatever that was. Yeah. Um, And the name of the mall is Star Court. Star Court. We got to go space agey for this because it is the 80s. People in the 80s thought. We were gonna and, we were gonna be in space very soon. And they had Sam Goody, and they had the Gap when it originally started. Yeah, it was pretty funny. You had like the old eighties things, uh, Orange Julius coming out in the malls, and it was classic. Well, I heard you funny. Up there. And, then, and then you see uh, Steve. The greatest part of this whole oh, trailer right. was just the awkward ass look. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Of Steve behind the cash register of what could only be, and it's it's an ice cream shop, an ice cream shop, uh, Scoops Ahoy, Scoops and Ahoy, he, and, and all he, he says, thing, Ahoy, <laughs> with some other girl next to him, and yeah, he just says I, Ahoy very awkwardly. Yeah, it was pretty funny. And well, what's really funny is everybody that knows Stranger Things and knows Hawkins. Obviously, they're trying to like hide what's been happening in Hawkins. They're with... hi- they're hyping up the fan base, and they <laughs> oh, yeah. they, did, they didn't show anything nope. about the actual story. Yeah, um, this will probably play a small part. Um, it'll be it it it's just a reference to yeah. pulling the fans back into the backdrop of what is the '80s. It almost looks like the the town came into a lot of money. Somehow. Hmm. Government funding. What happened here? <laughs> you know? Uh, uh, shameless plug. Yeah, if you guys want to get ready for season three, go check our deep dive out. Episodes 21 and 22, I believe. We broke them up into two parts, but me, Lynn, and Stranger Nick things, yeah. did Stranger Things season two. We did a recap of season one. Yeah. And Matthew... Yeah, we will make sure Matthew's in here for season three. I will be here. He needs to be I here because I have greatly missed your perspective in all of this chaos. Hey Matt, if you didn't know on Hulu, there's some new movies that came out. You can you can watch it now, dude. You can finally you. catch up I on really that. Hate you. No, we it's didn't. Not you, I'm just want <laughs> no. listeners. You guys recall <laughs> we we threatened the VR experience, but that didn't happen. It's, You're it's still fine. Still, it's still not going to happen. I, I still can't watch it. <sighs> Nick, is being left, Nick is being left out because of you, sir. And I love yeah, Stephen I don't King. Really care. He will suffer. You what don't kind care. of friendship do you have with him <laughs> to where you just throw him by the wayside? This is... I will not see that movie. Matthew... You should expect it from our soulless friend. Would it... <laughs> Red-headed ginger, would it help if uh, all of us, including our wives, sat in front of a big TV during broad daylight with our children in the background and the volume turned way down? Nope. I'm that, gonna, that book's you know what? for life. I you, was 12 you know years old when I read it. Uh, and... Matthew, we're gonna get to the we're gonna get into the deep nitty gritty of what's really bothering but, you. But you see, I made a promise. Now I can't watch it until you watch it with me. Nick, on a side note, my wife pointed out that when our kids are acting crazy, almost on the level of uh, psychotic, that there is a deeper underlying issue as to why they're lashing out. Yes. Now, now Matt isn't lashing out. It's quite the opposite. I think it works the same way. There's a Maybe deep he needs seated to issue out. here that we need to uncover. So and then we, help him past. Yes. 
like I said, the the trailer when that first came out, it was there was one part in that freaking trailer that was directly from the book. I know what part, part you're talking about, and I'm mm-hmm. very I I get it. Let's we'll move on. <sighs> well, guys, it's been quite a night. Uh, you viewers at home have no idea how long we've recorded, and we're gonna leave it that way. <laughs> But that's going to conclude our movie trailer talk uh, <laughs> for this week. Guys, thank you for a wonderful episode 40. Matthew, thank you for opening us up here. Yeah, even though it took me like First eight time, almost two years in, and only, sadly only well, 40 episodes. That's on. what happens when you go by weekly. Technically, it's my second time. The first time was actually like episode three. Way back in the day. Yes. If you guys care to check. <laughs> that being said... <laughs> Frankie, you could tell me. <laughs> yes, our fan Frankie should know. You've checked out all our content. Anyway. <laughs> guys, thank you for listening. Uh, you guys can catch us on all our social media, both at Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. That's right, Matthew. I have an Instagram. We have an Instagram. You didn't know that until tonight. 40 I, episodes in. And I was already <clears throat> following, which kind of makes me feel like a... Embarrassed. Uh, I think embarrassed is a good word. I said more on. Well, that being said... Both. Both words. You guys can find all our uh, videos, podcasts, and external media, including articles, at a wonderful place called NerdentialsMedia.com. That's oh, right. Sorry. No, you're fine. That works. <laughs> NerdentialsMedia.com, guys. Go there. You can send us a direct email. You can see all our social media links. And that's where our YouTube videos and podcasts are also found. We're also on iTunes and Google Play and what have you. Guys, do us a favor and spread the word of nerd. Give us a rating or even just... Give us a review or even just a rating. That's what I meant to go with. If you guys can't find the words on a review, just give us a star rating there on the old Apple iPods if you happen to be on there. Or podchaser.com is another good place. Give us some reviews. Yes. Get get Help us be seen by more nerds by you. Also, guys, our Discord, which is a beautiful chat program, is... Uh, Enterable by the clickable link down below. Click on that Discord link and join the conversation. Um, for click, 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 for myself, Nick, and Matt. This has been your Nerdy Essentials, and as always, nerds, we'll see you on, on the, the other, other side. side. That was messy. Sorry. Was <laughs> we'll see you. That on was him. Let's try it My again. That would be an outtake. Let's try it again. Mm-hmm.